quite a dirty process. It's Seattle's largest river, the Duwamish. We're taking a look at the rich history of this region and what the city is doing to clean up years of industry and pollution. Plus, meet one resident who is taking action into his own hands. These stories and more are coming up on this episode of City Stream. Hello and welcome to this special edition of City Stream. I'm Josephine Chang. Today we're out along the banks of the Duwamish River to explore this vital waterway to our city. You know, the Duwamish is intermingled with industry, but there are a few parks, like this one, run by the Port of Seattle, known as Terminal 107. This area is so rich with history. To really look at the state of the Duwamish today, we really need to look at the past. Producer Felix Fennell explores the history of the Duwamish River. Crossing Seattle's busy seaport on Elliott Bay with the Puget Soundkeeper Alliance. The saltwater port is so key to the city's global connections, it's easy to forget that Seattle is also a river city. For more than a century, the Duwamish has functioned as a major industrial waterway at the south end of Elliott Bay. Right now we are in the um, Duwamish River estuary, which used to be a bunch of braided channels. It was a river delta that extended way out into the bay. So they straightened the wa waterway, dredged out the deep water port, and built Har Harbor Island. But the Duwamish wasn't always this way. Natives lived along the river for thousands of years, and settlers established homesteads here in the 1850s. Hey, hey Paul, yeah. you want to go back behind Kellogg Island? We got a real high tide, I think. Yeah. Most of the Duwamish used to look more like this stretch of river. This turn that we're making in the, in the river was originally what the whole river was like. It, was, it just wound around. Kellogg Island feels like a time warp. It's an amazing scenic throwback, tucked in between the heavy industries, bridges, and pilings crowding the river. That's the only original part of the river right there. When you ask the question of what does the Duwamish River mean, um, it's kind of like asking what does your grandmother mean? James Rasmussen is a member of the Duwamish tribe and the coordinator of the Duwamish River Cleanup Coalition. His family has been connected to the river for thousands of years. We're kind of in front of the last part of the old river, you know, and it, it bends around Kellogg Island and it always has bend around the island. Um, used to be called Mud Island because it stretched all the way across, you know, to uh, Beacon Hill, but um, this still was an old channel of the river. There's one channel on this side and there's one channel on the other side and the rest in the middle was mud flats. When the Duwamish was reshaped to make way for industry, the homes of natives and settlers began to disappear. What we sometimes forget about is that, you know, there was no balance during that time. We, you know, it was going to be turned into industrial river, so that's what we're doing with it. Um, and that kind of came right down on top of the communities that were already existing here. <laughs> During the 20th century, the Duwamish became home to iconic local industries that employed thousands, including shipyards, the old Fisher flour mill, a Ford assembly building, and Boeing's historic Plant 2. Thousands of B-17 Flying Fortress bombers were built here during World War II. In spite of the industrial feel of the Duwamish, there's also marinas for recreational boats and plenty of houses still along the riverbank too. It was back in the 1970s during the ecological movement that attitudes about industrial waterways began to change. 
cities everywhere began to look at their rivers and canals with new, critical eyes. And what they saw in and along the Duwamish was pollution and environmental degradation. A slow and often complicated cleanup of the river has been underway for many years, and there's still much to do. Puget Sound Keeper Alliance monitors the Duwamish and helps out with the cleanup too. Cleaning it up is exceedingly difficult. You have to think that prevention is far easier, but that's a big, that's a big social experiment which we haven't fully um, uh, implemented yet. The Duwamish is still an active industrial area. There's scrap metal processing and factories making things like concrete. Natives still fish here too. But recently, some big changes have taken place. Remember the Boeing plant where they built all those B-17s? Boeing tore it down in 2012. Now, the riverbank is being restored to create habitat for plants and wildlife. For James Rasmussen, the future of the Duwamish River is all about balance. It is an industrial river, and it's important that it always stay an industrial river. Um, but there's also communities that are right on the river, you know, and, and it's important that they have an opportunity to thrive as well. And you can't separate the river from the plants that grow around it. You can't separate the river from the wildlife that's in it and around it. Um, it's all one thing. There are many ways that you can explore the Duwamish, even by staying dry right here on land. T107 Park here and its neighbor, Herring Park, run by the City of Seattle, are two perfect spots to visit. Nestled along the riverbank just south of the West Seattle Bridge, T107 has its own unique history. The park is the site of a former Duwamish Indian tribe village. It was later used for the construction industry when a lumber mill and brick factory were located here. Now, thanks to restoration work several years ago, these eight acres are a park filled with historic sculptures, walking paths, and an estuary vital for native salmon and birds. If you would like to learn more about the history of the Duwamish or the parks along the waterway, just visit our website at seattlechannel.org slash citystream. Still to come, how one man is doing his part to clean up the waterway. And we'll look at the bigger cleanup for the Duwamish River. Don't go away, there's more City Street coming up. Are you on the go? Then take City Stream with you. Log on to seattlechannel.org or iTunes to sign up for podcasts of every City Stream episode. Then download them to your mobile device and you'll never miss a show. While the Duwamish certainly has a muddy and contentious past, its future is actually looking quite bright. At least that's the goal of the city and many partners who are working in concert to make sure that these troubled waters are really behind us. Producer Jeff Gentis has the story. Late summertime, and the living is easy on this river. This is about as lazy as it gets along the Duwamish. For over a century, the Duwamish has been a hard working river. Lined by heavy marine and industrial sites, we paid a price for all that hard work. Raw industrial effluents from chemical processes, deposition from smelters to canneries to meat production facilities. Combined sewer overflows used to be pretty much uncontrolled in the Duwamish Corridor, and that's changed dramatically since the 80s. Declared an EPA Superfund site in 2001, the tide is changing and restoring the Duwamish to a cleaner, safer body of water. Most days in South Park, there's a steady din of heavy equipment along the Duwamish. This is Terminal 117, and it's one of the hottest contaminated spots along the river. Quite a dirty process. We're finding a lot of tar, oil, laden soils. That's what the site was profiled for. That's the type of contamination that's all throughout this Terminal 117 site. The soil here is so contaminated, 
The dump trucks are lined with plastic to contain excavated ground. Some of it can be handled in the general Seattle area. Some of it's being hauled off to Idaho. That's an EPA approved facility to handle this type of soils. It's hard to believe someday this will be a landscaped and natural tract of land. But there's an example of what this will look like just a few miles downstream. Under the soaring West Seattle Bridge is a restoration project in progress. What we've done is we've worked with the city of Seattle to identify those sites that would make good habitat restoration areas right on the river. And we've got a lease with the city now that allows us access to 13 sites up and down the river. This used to be the main thoroughfare over the old West Seattle Bridge. All this excavation and planting is going to help another set of commuters passing through, local salmon, which of course makes these guys happy. So you look at it as if you're a juvenile salmon. Everybody who's developing habitat up and down the river here is trying to make them so they're all connected. Connectivity is a key word for this team too. Stormwater runoff moves through an integrated system of pipes heading for the Duwamish. Seattle Public Utilities is hard at work making sure no new contaminants enter the river. We've been working through the Duwamish Basin cleaning the most contaminated lines first. What we're finding most and looking for are PCBs and metals. And we've been working on this line all summer to jet and clean the entire system, which would be about 20,000 feet of line. Everything that's vacuumed out of these lines is taken to a holding station where it can be evaluated. We test the water, make sure that it's clean enough to discharge to the sewer, and then we're allowed to discharge the water to the sanitary sewer. The sediment, which is handled separately after it's dewatered, gets hauled off site to a landfill for disposal. So in the last three or four years, we've cleaned about five to six miles of line, and we've removed about 1,500 tons of wet sediment from those lines. Do you know if this has ever been sampled? If the discharge has ever been sampled? Um, SPU has another ongoing program to make sure protecting the Duwamish is business as usual. When you have this system cleaned, will you guys do it yourself or will you have a contractor do it? It routinely conducts on-site inspections of local companies to make sure their water runoff systems are environmentally in compliance. Because this goes out to the Duwamish River right. without any other treatment. Obviously you can't see the mud or you can't see the chemicals in the mud, but the cleanup process is going to clean up the river by about 90% or more, depending on what's coming in from upstream. Cleaning up the Duwamish has been a slow, steady process that now is energized on every front. Abandoned industrial waterfront is being replaced by native landscaping. And here's the ultimate test. As the river returns to its natural health, its local wildlife also will thrive. It's okay to fish for salmon now, they're just passing through. But catching resident fish and crabs? Not today. The best news is though, those days finally are in sight. We're really planning on returning the waterway to a better condition than it's been in about 100 years. We're improving the environment and making things better for the local communities. While most of the heavy lifting is done by the city, the port, and industry partners, there's a lot that area residents can do as well. You can do your part to keep runoff pollutants out of the water system, and you can volunteer for a cleanup crew. There's a lot more tips and links on our website at seattlechannel.org slash citystream. We'll be right back. The Duwamish cleanup effort really is a community project. 
Residents working together with businesses to improve the waterway and its parks. Producer Penny Legate introduces us to one man who gets right down the work, taking the cleanup into his own hands. The Duwamish River, a vital artery serving Seattle's busiest industrial area. Its banks are choked by factories, warehouses, manufacturers, and more. A long history of heavy industry has exacted a heavy toll. In 2001, the Environmental Protection Agency put the Lower Duwamish River on the list of Superfund cleanup sites, calling it one of the most toxic places in the entire country. So in a scenario this huge, is it possible that just one person can really make a difference? This man believes he can. Oh. Several times a week, West Seattle's Neil Chisholm hits the Duwamish in his little cataract. His goal is simple. I am seeing if I can make a difference in the trash that's floating out to sea here. I'm looking for anything that floats, that's made out of plastic, basically. Anything that a bird or a fish could eat or get choked by. Now, Neil didn't wait for someone to assign him this job. He just saw the problem and tackled it because... Basically, nobody was doing it. We have to stop this stuff that's going out to sea here at the source, and you have to find a way to start shutting down the flow of this trash in each river, in each stream, get it off the beaches before it does go out into the ocean and displace the food out of the, out of the food chain. All righty, and we need our tools. Once on land, Neil's little grabber tool becomes a blur. See how much stuff there is. Snapping up all sorts of tidal trash. Beer can. Oh, there's a piece of rope. Cigarette butts are the worst. Big chunk of glass. Any kind of plastic bags. Oh, that's a beauty. Some nastiness there. Yeah. Going in the bucket. Say, hey, it's a good day. Sometimes he comes across some pretty weird stuff. We found a safe full of jewelry in about two feet of water. It had uh, people's passports and some old antique jewelry, and we called the police and returned it. To, uh, I think it got back to the rightful owners. Neil's efforts don't go unnoticed. Others who frequent the Duwamish, like skipper Bob McKee, are appreciative. It's a, pretty much a one-person deal on his part and has made a tremendous impact. And Neil's work also nets praise from Carrie Simpson with the Duwamish River Cleanup Coalition. We see cleaning up Puget Sound as a huge priority for this region, then I think we need to start here. And people like Neil have said, I'm starting right here. Plastic bottle. Neil's removal of the, the debris that's in the river, fishing nets and the plastic. That's a bag, that's bad. Hundreds of lighters and you know all those kind of things. Beautiful stuff. Aren't necessarily part of the Superfund cleanup because the Superfund cleanup is focusing on really toxic chemicals that are in the mud of the river. So those two things are different, but I think they're connected because Neil has taken it upon himself to do something. From afar, it might seem like a lonely job out here. See any plastic over here? A solo crusader facing a rising tide of garbage. But Neil actually has a lot of company. Well, it's a... Uh... It's a very rugged waterway, it's industrial, but uh, in between all of the industry and the pipes and the plumbing, we have big rafters, we have big, beautiful uh, peregrine falcons, the fastest birds in the world, live up in the bridge right above us. The uh, osprey, big, beautiful hunting birds. We have uh, great blue heron, beautiful cormorants, the, the little, down to the little tiny birds, the, the seabirds on the shores. The Canadian geese, they flock through here. And then there's the, the sea lions and the salmon run, and it's, uh, it's, it's an amazing place once you kind of get the industry out of focus and start looking at the part that lives and, and tries to make, a, make its way through the river system here. Neil's many photos bear witness to an amazing phenomenon, the resiliency of nature in an extremely toxic hotspot. Proof that the Duwamish is still very much alive and worth fighting for. Generally, through history, it's been a few people that have made a difference. One or two people or a small group of people that have made the biggest differences in the world. And Neil's part of that. He's got 
going to take a lot of work. There's a lot of uh, contamination. There's a lot of pollution, but you work at it a little bit at a time, and every once in a while you make some big progress. You got to be hopeful. If you would like to get involved in the cleanup efforts, there are a lot of opportunities. Just visit our website at seattlechannel.org slash citystream to find out more. Your city, your stories on City Stream. Fighting robots and golfing hot shots, picture taking cats in stylish hats, exploring the beach and delicious treats, silver bowls and painting walls, bicycle cops and Seattle grown crops, SUPs and urban trees, city bees and jogging dogs, historic balls and pickle balls, baby seals and cheap deals. Your city, your stories on City Stream. Thursdays at 7 p.m. on Seattle Channel 21 at any time on seattlechannel.org. That's it for this episode of City Stream. We hope you learned something about the Duwamish, its history, and what you can do to help clean up and improve this vital ecosystem for all of us. Remember those links to more information on our website, seattlechannel.org slash citystream. And we're on Facebook and Twitter. I'm Josephine Chang. See you next time on City Stream.